Welcome back to Game Changers, stories of innovation from The Ohio State University. And for many, the stage is a form of pure entertainment and drama, but for the Interact Theater Group, it's a vehicle for social change. And here to tell us all about it is theater director and Interact coordinator Robin Post, actor and director Liam Cronin, assistant dean for professional and external affairs Dr. Ken Hale, and clinical assistant professor in pharmacology and medicinal chemistry Dr. Nicole Quick. I want to thank all of you for being here with us today. Um, Robin, we'll start with you. Tell us what Interact is all about. The intent was to create theater pieces to address various issues campus-wide mm -hmm. and then to hopefully have dialogue around those issues. And these weren't just any issues. They're issues that people have a hard time talking about. Correct. Right? Correct. So we've, you've talked about what cancer survivors, you've talked about relationship abuse. How do you choose those topics? They typically come to us. We don't actually decide what the topics will be. So as the program has grown, interest has grown, and people come to us and say, hey, this seems like a really neat venue to discuss whatever the issue might be. Would you be willing to create a piece about this? So we don't typically say no. Now, Liam, as a student, I know you've graduated, but as a student, this was something you really wanted to do. It was a class you really wanted to take, right? Yeah, I, I took it a couple times uh, while I was at the university. And, mm -hmm. and this last time uh, with the, the pharmacy project, Generation Rx, uh, Robin approached me about directing the piece, mm -hmm. um, which was a great experience. And I got to kind of feel what it was like to be in her shoes and, and how a piece like this is created really from the ground up without any script or anything like that. How do you prepare for something like this? I mean, as, as the character, if you haven't been involved, and I'm sure some of mm -hmm. your peers probably actually were involved, so it was mm -hmm. helpful to talk to one another, yeah. but how do you prepare for this? Well, as, as an actor, um, we really spend a lot of time talking about it because it's, it's not as if we're picking up a, a Shakespearean script and we're going to be Romeo, right? We're, we're using our own personal experiences to create a character. And sometimes that character is made from our personal experiences, and sometimes it's made from another party's personal experiences. Someone that comes in and tells a story, or a classmate that tells a story that we can adopt and make our own and change a bit and mm -hmm. spit back out in a different way. Did it way. bring another level of responsibility to, to what you do and to your craft? Or? In, in a, yeah, in a couple ways. If it's someone else, it brings that level of responsibility of telling their story. And if it's, if it's yours, it brings that in a new level of fear almost you know to tell your own story you don't necessarily know everything there is to know about prescription abuse but you guys go to the source correct and that's where you guys come in right Ken and Nicole okay yeah. tell Absolutely. me a little bit about about your research well we uh, Nicole and I both work with a group called the Generation RX initiative mm -hmm. it's a it's a group that's interested in students faculty staff in our college and in other units on campus that's interested in medication safety issues but really concerned about the rising abuse of prescription drugs so, you know, we've been working for about three years now on developing projects in schools and on college campuses and communities to help raise awareness about this growing problem and to help people understand some of the misperceptions they have about safety and legality and the things that, that make them uh, uh, abuse these products. Mm -hmm. And that's why we approached Robin originally because we're, we're looking for innovative ways to not just lecture about the issue, but how do we really get the message across through theater, you know, through gaming, through discussions, through skits that we can do, and this has been very powerful. And well, they're acting out the things that you kind of deal with, you know, on a more academic and scientific level every day. The real strength comes that this was a student-driven project, and at the college, obviously, and the university as a whole, we're interested in developing students and using students as the, the, the mind behind this and driving force, and, and that's what we do with the Generation RX initiative, is really take advantage of our students' strengths and their enthusiasm and interest to do and be involved in this project. We don't lead these things. We, let our, we just guide the students as they go. So I think that was a great... Um, uh, a bonus for working with Interact. And the other thing is, in the College of Pharmacy, we're all pretty, very similarly scientifically minded, and we have a different way of looking about a problem and, and thinking about how to talk about this that m may have not worked and probably wouldn't have worked very well with a wide variety of audiences. So it was great to tap into a totally different department in, in a different mind, this creative use of, of theater to, to come out with a new way to represent this, or disseminate this information. And I think that in the end we have a more powerful production because of it that's much more interesting to our audience. How will you research differently after interacting with Interact? Well, it's funny because we now use 
skits, skit-based activities a lot in our educational activities. So a lot of what we do are we talk to students of varying ages, including young kids, where we talk about that it's important to understand how to use medication safely. We talk to older high school students and even college students, but a skit is it's almost always in our presentation now because it's something that's it's easily engages the audience as they like to do it and it, it captures their attention much more so than just us lecturing to them. That's the least effective way to get this information across. Is there is there one person that you, you might have come into contact with Liam in preparing for this uh, production that really kind of resonated with you and made you say this is why I'm doing this? Was there a story? Was there a moment? You know that that moment for me comes um, in this Q&A format that that Robin brings brought to interact and, and develop with interact um, that's when it becomes really satisfying for me because people come up and talk to these characters as if you know they're really here and really in the room there's a huge amount of like dualistic learning going on during that um, you know the the actors are all playing a character but they're also directed to change if somebody in the audience changes them so not only is the audience learning, but the actors are learning. It's this sort of almost hidden learning process mm -hmm. that's happening. Mm -hmm. And the other piece of, of, the, of the puzzle with that whole um, Q&A is that a lot of the time the people who are asking the questions have a real need to heal mm -hmm. in just asking the question. And so it's um, much more helpful to ask a character something or confront a character than it is the actual source of your pain. And so that's one way of kind of catharsis for people that are asking questions. They aren't even necessarily aware that that's happening for them, but that's happening. The students are experiencing that, and that's what makes it very like, wow, this is happening right here and now. Okay. And that's pretty amazing. Well, we're going to talk a lot more about how you know theater and the scientific research has kind of merged when we come back. But theater and science may sound like strange co-stars, and we'll see what the reviews say when Game Changers continues.